Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. I want to start off by saying thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. It means a lot. It helps keep a roof over my head, and I just can't thank you enough, really. I love talking Destiny with you here down in the comment section on Twitter. I wanted you to know that. I really appreciate you. And in today's video, we have a couple new snipers that came with Season of the Chosen. I was going to review them separately, but decided just to throw it all into one video. I respect your time, and by doing it head-to-head, -head, other conversations come up. Important conversations. Pros and cons. Why you would run one over the other. How they interact with the meta weapons. And the overall meta that's going on. On. And when I talk about sniper rifles, I always say this when I review them. If you use sniper rifles, you're a sniper. When new ones come out, try them. Always try them. The stat distribution at base or the hidden stats just might fit with you. Because one stat that we can't talk about is feel how it feels in your hands. You might try a new one, it could become your new favorite thing. It could have the right stats and it just could become your main. Like for me, I took a chance on Cloud Strike and in case you didn't know, and it might come as a surprise to some of you, I main Cloud Strike. It's actually my most used energy sniper in the entire lifespan of Destiny 2 for PvP. And with this video, it's actually perfect that Cloud Strike is an exotic in that energy category because there are a lot of really good kinetic exotic primaries. I need a legendary sniper if I go Hawkmoon, Ace of Spades, Last Word, and so on. Or even just a change up in that energy slot. It's all about feel. Like, have you ever seen any videos of mine where I was sniping with a Dord? You haven't, because I don't like a Dord. It's a great sniper, but it's just not for me. Far Future, it comes from the Umbral System, Battlegrounds, you can focus the roles. And here's the deal though, I think it costs way too much for the charges. So all I do is I play the slot machine looking for chosen gear. I have a nice frenzy extraordinary rendition. And for the focus of today's video, I have a far future just by turning in the random umbrals for the chosen gear. I got quick draw and opening shot, which is what you want. And again, that's just by turning in random chosen ingrams and I'm gonna continue to do so until the grind is better. Frozen Orbit on the other hand, it's just a random drop at the end of a PVP match. You need to make sure you have on Crucible Prosperity. That way you have a chance at an additional legendary drop if you get a win. You could play 50 games and not see one, or you might get back to back drops in two games. Hopefully they do up the drop rates, but it's all random, it's all RNG. I wanna talk about Far Future first, cause I don't really think that it's getting the street cred that it deserves. For the perks, left node, we have Quick Draw, Surplus, Moving Target, Auto Loading, Lead From Gold, Slide Shot. In the final perk column, Opening Shot, Frenzy, Wellspring, Thresh, Demolitionist, and Multi-Kill Clip. As far as the stats, all of them are midline. Nothing to worry about, there's no bad stats. It has 62 aim assist and a 45 zoom level. That's important because Bungie made it to where lower zoom scopes have a large reduction in aim assist cone angle, and zooms around 50 are unchanged, so higher zooms get a little bit more. The first thing I want to point out is opening shot on Far Future and why it's so important as far as PvP. Improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of attack. Basically, from what I've seen and felt, any negation that they put on the aim assist zoom level is near nullified by opening shot. The perk is always gifted headshots and on Far Future, it's no different. The 90 RPMs, they've always been a fan favorite, beloved, adored, long shadow, tranquility, and so on. They do 131 to the body, meaning that a hand cannon headshot can do a cleanup. This is the only 90 RPM energy in the game with opening shot and I want to stress this with how they adjusted that cone angle and how these 90s are just statted at base because they have high aim assist just high overall base stats it's gonna feel like home with opening shot on it like the ways of the old it's a magnet if you snipe and see opening shot drop on this it falls I highly recommend that you try it out because it stands out it really does that's really where I am with it if I want that early destiny feel for a sniper to me this opening shot for our future accomplishes that it's just a clean sniping machine the scope is open it's non-obstructive, the gun model is lean. But even though opening shot pretty much does counter what they did to snipers in that cone angle, it isn't the only role to look for. In the first perk column for PvP, Quick draw is what you want. If you can put on targeting, you can deal with that. You want to go moving target or surplus. And with this frame, you can use targeting, not have snapshot or quick draw. It's going to be slower, but it's still going to be okay. Now in that second perk node, opening shot first, but there's also a case for wellspring and demolitionist. That was one of my favorite qualities about Soul Survivor because it could roll with a snappy perk and demolitionist. You're going to be sniping at a distance, getting ability energy. That goes a long way especially in this meta, there is a place for it. So if you get that roll, use it for a couple matches, see how it's working with your builds. If you get something like demo, go ahead and just sell out. Make sure you have 100 discipline and just go for it. For PVE, it changes. And this is gonna segue right into Frozen Orbit. You look for things like auto loading lead from gold in the first node, but in the second one, Demolitionist and Wellspring, they work, but look out for Frenzy on it. It's incredible on the Extraordinary Rendition, but here's how that damage profile works. The base future does 20,411. With Frenzy up, it takes about 12 seconds. 
15 seconds for it to proc once you're in combat, it deals 24,493. 20% more, which is great! The perk also gives you handling and reload speed. And with the right combination, like I have, you can get something like extended mag and backup mag on top of that to have 7 rounds. In comparison, a high impact sniper like Frozen Orbit that we're getting ready to talk about, it deals 25,030 damage. So 25,030 with a slower fire rate, about 4 or 5 rounds, or 24,493, 537 less damage per shot, but you have the fire rate and you have the magazine. It's a solid option. With anti-barrier with those rounds, you have enough to do some damage, break the shield, and then down them in one magazine. It's really good, and I do plan to use it in certain scenarios as the game moves on. This is all 7 shots here in a 1300 loss sector, no problem. Compared to the Orbit, this one has Vorpal Weapon, so 4 rounds in the magazine. The Frenzy Far Future does so much better. And a side note with anti-barrier on a sniper, Cloud Strike's incredible. If you land a couple shots and get the storm going, the animation kind of works out to where as soon as they pop that barrier shield, the storm obliterates it. It's great. There's some really good things about Far Future in PvE and PvP. PvP. For the Crucible, maybe you want Quickdraw Wellspring or Demo, or go for that nice forgiving Quickdraw opening shot. For PvE, Frenzy has a place on it. It really does. 20% is no joke. Not to mention Hedrons, a boss spec, various things on top. You have the fire rate, the damage, the magazine, it's great. Now, Frozen Orbit. Void, high impact, a much needed weapon and archetype added to the game. This is the only usable energy legendary high impact in the game right now. The no more Tatar Gaze, no more Trophy Hunter, just Frozen Orbit as far as legendary. The stats are low, per how they kind of base these frames out. It's worth noting, it has the lowest handling stat out of any sniper in the game at 28. It's even slower than Whisper of the Worm. This is one of those weapons like Bottom Dollar that has a super pull to it. So with Far Future, you have that direct path. If anything, you can just kind of RNG slot machine the Umbrals. With this, you have to get lucky to even get the drop, then get lucky again for a decent perk combo. Crucible wise, you're specifically looking for quick draw and snapshot. It's found in the second node. You want to pair that with moving target or killing wind. You can't really be too choosy though. I have quick draw outlaw. All I needed was quick draw. Priority one is one of those snappy perks. If you want to use any other perk in that second column, you would need to lean on surplus in the first node. So like your options start to really slim down. I have a surplus Vorpal roll that I do use in Trials versus Behemoths, but maybe you want something like Kill Clip, like you used to do with Tatara Gaze. And on this one, I have Killing Wind Kill Clip. This has double sniper targeting and it's barely serviceable. But you get those kills, you reload, and you can start body shotting with Kill Clip. As a high impact frame, your main thing is you're able to take out supers, aside from the Behemoth. You have massive body shot damage at 158. That's a very important number. Buffs like Hedron's Empowering Rift, charged with light, can one shot lower resilience levels. Hedron's is 8 or less. With that body shot damage, one of the main things for me is that it fits in the current meta with the 120s. One of the silliest things in the game right now that no one's really talking about or doing consistently is the double body. From there, you go right into Rampage, Swashbuckler, Kill Clip, Multi Kill Clip. It's absolutely silly, and you shouldn't care. It's a very viable strat. It's a very powerful setup doing a body shot 158, then a body shot 120 for 50. After that, you go right into two tapping with your Rampage. It's ridiculous. Again, I do it all the time. I have no shame. You can call me the body shot bandit. I don't care. And my thought process is like, there's no way a week later, say I was doing it to one team, you think like a week or two later, like, man, remember that one guy that was body shotting with the sniper rifle and the hand cannon? Nobody's talking about that stuff. And with a body shot, you don't really have to worry about flinch too much because you're likely to body way more often than to hit head after being flinched. And of course, you do want to go for the headshot when you can or need to. But again, this is just as viable solely due to how potent the 120s are with damaging perks. I mean, my cloud strike ratio is like 80% headshots with near 5,000 kills. I need to hit those with cloud strike. I don't need to hit them with frozen orbit. It also makes the 140 RPM hand cannons ace hawk moon. They can also have a body shot cleanup. And it's much easier to pair last word with a high impact sniper than any other archetype of sniper. And again, snap quick draw, it's nearly essential due to how low, historically low, the handling is. The targeting perks really won't save it. You can get away with it on something like a cloud strike or an adaptive frame, but these high impacts, you're kind of cutting it close. For PvE, you might find yourself with a PvE role because there's so many perks. Things like Vorpal, Demolitionist, Clown Cartridge, Triple Tap, all great. And we won't really talk too much about them just because of how random this pool is. I think most players are looking for PvP roles and it, that kind of starts and ends with Snap and Quick Draw. Those are heavily weighted. It feels great. The only thing I don't really like about it is how big the scope is on your screen. I don't like how the scope is in the view of my Sprint Chevron. I use that a lot when running around and centering. It obstructs that, but that's okay. The 50 zoom means that it's kind of left unchanged as far as any penalties. For some of you, getting used to a 50 zoom, it might take some time. It means that your drag scopes have to kind of do a longer pull, or you need to center faster before you drag. In time though, you do get used to it. 
The biggest thing overall is the massive body shot damage, and you're pairing that with deadly kinetics, exotic even, and you're using that body shot damage as a team cleanup or getting the damage buffs. That's really what's separating the two to me. You have a lot more utility with Frozen Orbit, but with Far Future, you get that more traditional old school sniping experience. Both are great, but with there being only one usable legendary high impact in the game, the meta that we're in, I'm using the orbit over Far Future. I'm going to continue looking for a snapshot or quick draw with moving target. I'm not too picky as long as I get some sort of combination. Both of them though are very special for what they are and they are worth trying out if you're an avid sniper. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff Gaming. You can use the link down below in my code COOL at checkout for a discount. Let's talk about these two sniper rifles below, what roles do you have, and which one do you like between the two? Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.